Hey there, welcome to CNT Collectibles. I am C. Hope you're doing well. All right, this is your Sports Card Chart Blast where we take a look at the price action of our favorite collectibles. Price is truth. Doesn't matter what we think. Bottoms in, tops in. Who knows? Who knows? Time will tell, but we can at least uh, set up some risk reward and just see what's uh, moving, what's shaking, and uh, have some fun with this thing. So, start it off with the SCI 500 market pulse over the last couple of weeks. All these are um, for the indices that we're going over, risers and fallers, last couple weeks for the, the, the players that we're looking at, we'll go back uh, a couple of years just to get a feel for uh, some long-term reference points here. So the last couple of weeks, market uh, SCI 500, pretty flat, pretty flat. So I'm um, grinding along the bottom there, but uh, we're not putting in new lows. So we did put in a minor new low here, but for the most part... Um, just uh, just a lot of sideways action here since uh, a lot of people have been calling for the bottom. So it could be. Time will tell. Who knows? Who knows on that one here? So longer term, when you look out, it's like, well, that, that might be. We've seen some flattening before, and that wasn't the case. Um, but uh, but perhaps this time it is. So again, we'll uh, we'll see here. So all right, baseball. Some of the uh, some of the names that were rising. Todd Helton, uh, number of his uh, his cards. Um, he, we're looking for cards that are forty bucks with at least uh, uh, ten sales on them. Um, we don't want the one offs as, as much as we can prevent it here. But um, Todd Helton. Couple of uh, sales on his cards on the 24th, which uh, which lines up with an, um, Hall of Fame announcement day. He did not make it in, but he came up uh, just five votes short. So uh, perhaps they're getting a jump on next year. He should be uh, he should be a Hall of Famer about a year from now. Mike Schmidt. Um, interestingly enough, this is a card that I've been looking at lately. I want to pick up some uh, some more of the pseudo vintage. Some of the guys that uh, that I that I grew up with when I was a little when I was a little kid here. So um, he's getting uh, he's getting some love there as well. He should. The problem I have with the uh, with a lot of the cards in the '60s and '70s, you just get the the multiple players on the card. So I want I really want to get into these these names here, but I, I just don't like those uh, those um, the cards with two, three, four guys on there and the floating heads and all that kind of stuff. I I like the solo versions on them. So anyways. Um, Plenty of people do like the uh, the multiple uh, the multiple version multiple people on one card there. So Mike Schmidt getting some love, up double digits. Harmon Killebrew uh, up uh, up as well. Up uh, it was at ten percent. And Eddie Murray. So a lot of nice vintage there. Some current guys getting a little bit of love here. Uh, saw the Juan Soto Heritage. Um, Francisco Lindor. People may be catching on that he's really really good. So and uh, Yastrzemski. So a lot of vintage uh, vintage love. But I'm not ready to call it safe yet. All right, people. So um, I like it as well. But uh, none none of this stuff is uh, safe. It might be relative safe. It has less volatility. But none of it is safe here. All right, some fallers. Alex Alex Rodriguez, Ozzy Smith, see, not safe. Uh, Freddie Freeman, uh, interestingly enough, Miggy Cabrera, and uh, and Bo Bichette. So Miguel Cabrera, I'm not sure what's going on there. I mean, we know it's uh, we know it's going to happen here. So even the fallers weren't down that much. So A Rod, uh, maybe people were thinking that he was going to get into the hall. That did not happen. Um, likely doesn't happen. He's got a couple of years. Well, was he a couple of years into it, or he's got a couple of years left? It's not looking good for for him here, but uh, Ozzy Smith down double digits as well. A lot of these other guys down just a few percent. Barry Bonds ten percent, but the rest of these guys off uh, single digits here. So an end of the world it is not. Football. Brock Purdy leading the charge here. Uh, he's done nothing to dissuade people from buying his uh, buying his cards here. So. Um, at some point, uh, this run uh, ends. He becomes irrelevant for a period. Well, he, he's, he's Mr. Irrelevant, right? So he's already pretty irrelevant. Um, whether he wins it or just the, he think it's eliminated or the season ends, that should take some luster off of his card. So maybe it's best to sit back and watch. But we'll let the charts tell us what's up here. Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts. See a theme here? <laughs> um, a lot of the players that are uh, that are uh, pretty pretty darn relevant still still going strong here. Uh, Daniel Jones, for some reason, he's not relevant anymore. <laughs> but uh, people liked what they saw. Um, you know, if he played the Vikings uh, 17 times a year, then, uh, then yeah, he would be a, a persistent perennial riser. But if you um, actually throw a, a pass rush at him, then uh, he, he's 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 pretty average. And and uh, Larry Fitzgerald uh, getting some love here, so as well he should. Um, I'm not as in tune with the football Hall of Fame as I am with baseball, so I would. Uh, I he's getting in at some point. I just don't know when he's eligible and when that vote is. So maybe that's something to do with that. Some of the fathers, Austin Eckler down a double digits. Josh Allen has his suite of cards down 10 percent, and Christian McCaffrey. Which is kind of interesting. He's, he he still has a chance to make some hay here in the postseason. Basketball, some of your bigger risers: Kawhi Leonard, Patrick Ewing, and uh, and Clyde Drexler, Clyde the Glide. So uh, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of the, a lot of the old timers getting some love here. And um, overall, this may be transacting more. There's more of them out there. So again, we do have a filter on the number of sales. So uh, some of your followers: John Stockton. 
Jimmy Butler and Carl Malone. So of course, Stockton Malone will be uh, forever uh, intertwined. And so we'll take a look at them together here. All right. And I'll wrap it up with some hockey. Ilya, um, Ilya Samsonov, Mark Messier getting some love up uh, well into the double did. It's over 33%. Nick Suzuki and Mitch Marner um, leading the charge there on the way down. Cole uh, Caulfield, Leon Dressault, Dressault, <laughs> a couple L's in there. There's an extra L in there, I feel. Uh, Kale McCarr and Kirill Kaprizov. So, all right, we'll start it off with some baseball here. Todd Helton. Uh, Monster Rip, again, we had a couple of purchases on the 24th. I think people are anticipating a, a haul and uh, haul a nod, and um, it didn't happen. Uh, it will happen next year for the most part. Again, he's just five votes short. You get to that 50% level, and it's really a matter of time type thing. And so he should, uh, he should make it in. They tried to front run things a little bit did not work um i think uh you know for that psa 10 and that 93 tops traded um something in that uh 120 area or something like that maybe a better price you know let the lester come off a little bit again this is pretty thin volume we don't do much with that so uh if you are patient and you want that hall of famer in a very high grade um wait <laughs> scott Rowland did get into the hall of fame there was a bump on that card and again this is what happens all right um great the, it, you buy the rumor sell the news news happened he's in congratulations um well deserved um but uh but coming off and uh again very thin volume who the heck knows but his uh, 95 bowman the uh, prime prospects uh, in the foil in that uh, PSA nine, this is hard to gem. So, uh, you know, maybe that's a uh, that's a, a eighty dollar card or something like that uh, in the near future. So, pretty cheap entertainment for a Hall of Famer, a Mike Schmidt rookie card. This is the uh, PSA eight, I believe, uh, sitting just over a thousand bucks. In a, a thousand even is kind of your your price here. So, nice rip off the bottom of the range, uh, low volume. So, again, if you're looking at a thousand or thereabouts, that may be a, a little bit better price. But uh, who who knows? Just takes one person to jack this thing up to like 1500 or whatever and, and mess everything up so and market will do what the market does Harmon Killebrew excellent baseball player and makes an excellent rip here bottom of the range still a pretty decent opportunity to buy this uh but this rookie card in a PSA 6 I believe here so it could be a little bit of a pullback uh not that it's gonna rip up and when it does it tends to come back to earth but uh seems like this is kind of the area here so if that's what you're looking for why the heck not? In Eddie Murray in a PSA 8, the trend remains slightly down on this one here. Rip off the bottom of the range. Kind of in uh, kind of in no man's land here. But again, this is where buying is taking place. So if you get too high or get too low, it does kind of snap back to this uh, to this price where it's at right now. So not the most expensive card uh, in the world here. Um, Alex Rodriguez, one of your uh, one of your bigger followers, and uh, that was across this entire suite of cards. The partic this particular card, the uh, the ninety four um, uh, SP foil or whatever, is uh, is actually doing pretty well here. The last couple of sales are uh, are 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 up, <laughs> so that card's doing pretty well here. Again, uh, there's just a few players that you know maybe they don't ever get into the hall, but people just have such an affinity for them. And usually, you know, those players are really really awesome. So A Rod, Barry Bonds, things of that nature. Some of the uh, some of the greatest of all time. So um, Ozzy Smith. Uh, he had this spike, so coming out from there, that's not fair. Of course, you're going to get a sell off of that one here, but now he's sitting at the top of the range. But again, you're kind of in that area where um, there's been a lot of buying in the past, so we just call it the price, and you'll see some movement, and it is what it is. So, Freddie Freeman, interestingly enough, over the last couple of years, this is about as low as this has gone. This is your prospects auto 2009 uh, in, a, in a BGS 95, and so that's that's making new lows here. So I like Freddie Freeman. He's a he's a future Hall of Famer here, and, uh, and his prices are uh, continuing to make new lows. And so it's it's kind of interesting. I'm looking at uh, guys like Freddie Freeman and Nolan Arenado, Lindor, and you know, Carlos Correa. A lot of these guys that are really on a nice track and more established, and their cards are going for a third of the price of a lot of the a lot of the new guys. You know, it's like all right, I'd like to pick up a Torkelson before the season, do something like that. You know, look at Corbin Carroll and and uh, and some of those guys, even Bo Bichette. You know, guys that have only been in for a couple of years, and they're triple the price of of these guys here. So a lot of uh, a lot of recency bias here when you talk about like the vintage and people kind of moving out of it. I mean, you can even see it right now. People don't even care about guys that have been or you know cards cards that go back 10, 15 years. I mean, they're not even getting love. So <laughs> a lot of recency here. Miguel Cabrera. The top chrome traded, um, hovering around an area where, uh, yeah, what the heck? I mean, this is this is your decent. This was uh, 
resistance now support and so risk reward sets up fairly okay i mean you could have a little bit downside to the 850 area uh it's sitting over a thousand so it's not insignificant by any stretch here but we know what's going to happen to him in a few years here so uh boba shet um one of your uh one of your followers, Ian, uh, he continues to grind lower. This is his uh, his Bowman first refractor, four ninety nine here. But still, <laughs> um, he's, he's going to cost you about what a Freddie Freeman is for the most part, which is uh, in between the two. I think I know where I'm going on that one here. So, all right, Mike Trout. You know we're not getting out here without looking at Mike Trout, right? So it continues his uh, breakout retest. Now he's just kind of grinding. He's got upside to kind of the eighteen hundred area is your is your upside on that one. So we'll see if he can't get that uh, broken to the upside at some point here. But that's your that's kind of your line in the sand for now. 18 uh, 1800 bucks so um just a just 100 and change above where we're currently at all right football brock purdy um i don't even know what to do there's not a lot of volume on it doesn't have a ton of cards out um he's losing a little bit of uh shine here now it's getting a little bit frothy there's just not a lot of buyers to support these prices here i think the right thing to do is sit back and and watch more cards come on the market price comes down see if he can maintain this for for a period of time right now it's you know, you're just kind of hoping someone and we're always hoping someone buys our stuff for more than what we paid for that's the name of the game um but yeah this is really really the case there's not a lot out there it's a pretty limited market so uh, for me it's just sit back and watch i guess so jalen hurts grinding upwards you've got this uh support line at a uh whatever that uh that is a thousand bucks and that's your you know previous support now it is resistance on this one so the upside relative to the downside um it's not super favorable but I, I could see a spike out of this if he has you know a good week this week makes it to the super bowl the big game sorry um you could see a uh, you could see a pop here but those those haven't lasted in the past get above a thousand bucks and it doesn't it doesn't hang out there too long so um if you start to get some sales above um a thousand dollars persistently then that's your new floor but um but we're not there yet so uh joey b we had this one bottom ticked at about eight, or excuse me, about twelve hundred dollars with a move up to about eighteen hundred, and and this is what happens again. Low volume stuff. You had a couple of people that said, you know, <laughs> eighteen hundred. Come on, man, that's breakfast, and just shot this thing up, and now you're sitting outside the range. So we'll see how long that lasts here. I mean, if he uh, if he you know, loses this weekend, then you could come slide back into that sub two thousand area pretty easily here. But um, yeah, for now, um, you're you're outside of this range and could lead to some more upside. So. But, I, I think you wait for him to be a little less relevant when the season's all said and done one way or another. But um, yeah, that looks uh, there's 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 interest there. Now not a lot. There's more interest in this area here, and it's getting a little thin. So again, you, if it does go higher, it's probably going to be something like this, where you just have a, a, a sale or two or something, and uh, and one of them hopefully is not you, because I think it does probably come back down to that sub so 2k at uh, some point on that prism silver, Mahomes prism silver. Um, you know, no change in this one here. He keeps bumping up to the top of this range and just keeps coming off. So it's about as low as it gets, but the trend remains down. So it is what it is. I mean, he's been terrific. I don't know what it takes to, to get him to break out of that here. Super Bowl? <laughs> um, guess we'll find out on that one here. So uh, Josh Allen, Prism Silver, um, pretty high prices. And uh, just, you know, there's not a lot of action on these in the first place, right? Pretty thin volume. But we do have uh, the beginning of a trend. You need you need to connect the dots three times, and you can then you can call it a trend, right? So there you are. So bottom of the range coming off, and so may Josh Allen be a buy. Hmm, interesting enough here. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, kind of the same thing as uh, some of these other guys. You break in the downtrend. Now you're just in a consolidation area. Um, he, he that's that's a decent area here, even going back to 2020. That looks all right, and. Uh, there's a lot of volume here, so I like to see that. A lot of accumulation. Um, heck, if he does something in the in the playoffs, he could see a pop on this one here. So as far as his long term prospects, I don't know, but at least for now, risk reward sets up a little bit uh, favorably for C McC here. Dak Prescott. Um, just thought we thought we'd take a look. How about them Cowboys? New lows for Dak Prescott. <laughs> oh, not you know not counting that or whatever, but continues to grind lower. But risk reward does set up pretty favorably. Maybe the hate has gone a little bit too far. But he's a cowboy, so the hate can never go far enough here. So all right, basketball. Patrick Ewing, top of the range coming off just a little bit. One of your bigger bigger uh, movers as of late here. But that risk reward is unfavorable. So if you can't hang on to what is that uh, 150 bucks or something like that, then you maybe get it closer for uh, for 100. I think is the uh, the number on that one. So. Anyways, the uh, the price remains down. 
on that base. PSA 8, I think I have it. I can't read that. It's too small. It's too small. So maybe you can pause it. Let me know what it is. All right, Kawhi Leonard. Um, heck, here you go. Um, round trip right back to uh, right back to the starting point a couple of years ago. So uh, if cards you're looking for, it's like, well, this is about as good a chance as you've had in several years. Clyde the Glide Drexler. Same thing. Returning to the scene of the crime. Trend remains down. A lot of accumulation. So, you know, on a breakout, you want to see some uh, sustained buying. You don't want to see these one-offs or anything like that. But, uh, you know, interesting enough. I think you can get a little bit lower, but uh, not much. The volatility is starting to compress on that one. John Stockton, rookie card, bottom of the range. Looks interesting enough. And Carl Malone, the mailman, delivering sadness, I guess. Uh, if you bought up here, it is. But, uh, again, a lot of accumulation here. So, market overall. You know, when you if it is a bottom, what you're going to see is the things that have been beat up the most start to run the most. Those are the ones that are going to come back the hardest for the most part, um, at least in real world. Um, you know, what you have is people betting against a lot of these the, the aggressive names in, in a downtrend. And when you do that, what you're doing, if you're shorting the market or betting against it, you need to buy those shares back to cover your short at some point. And so when you do that, you have these natural buyers coming in. So the things that are beat up the most that are the most short are the ones that come back the strongest. And so we don't have that in uh, in cards. And so it'll be interesting to see if that is the case, the things that got beat up the most, if they come back the strongest. All I know is a lot of accumulation. The risk reward sets up pretty well. If you want a mailman, this is a good chance as you've had in a while. All right, Jimmy Butler, same thing here. Compressing, lower. And buying is starting to pick up. And eventually, as it starts to break up, it starts to go up, then you have a lot of people that, that sold in here that are like, oh, geez, I, I got to get that card back. And then those are your natural buyers to push these things um, higher. So, all right, Ilya Samsonov, uh, one of your bigger winners here. So I think you wait on it. It's very thin volume. There was a little bit of interest rate back in here in uh, in um, early 20, you know, about a year ago, early 2022. Uh, but it's very thin. It seems to... To, to, to come back into this area what 60 bucks or something like that um over time yeah that's 84 dollar card so yeah 60 dollars it's not going to hurt you either way is it uh, mark messier pg uh, i think that's the psa6 as well psa6 and uh you know coming into an area where heck that's about as good as it's been for uh for a while here so we'll see what uh see how that plays out we've got uh, nick suzuki trend remains down enough buying in here so you're kind of in no man's land where if you want the card you just just you just kind of buy it here i guess if it gets much lower than this it's it's pretty picked up pretty quickly so you got to be fast and you know maybe you are and if that's the case cool wait um but if it gets up a lot higher then it gets it gets sold and so it just seems like this is kind of your your range for the most part where your your clusters are buying in the past have happened mitch marner same thing trend down middle of the range you know buying in this area here so um you know again you have to be quick to buy or sell on that one here otherwise you just kind of buy it and if that's a card you want then then you're happy with it here um cole caulfield bottom of the range here so about as good as chance as you've had to get this card in a uh, in a while and um leon just all right we've got uh previous um, resistance which is now support and here you are again so top of the range backing off and so well again we'll see how that uh, how that plays out if buyers are willing to step in here or if they're going to wait for this thing to hit uh, you know 500 bucks 700 dollar card is it going to hit 500 where there's been a lot more buying in the uh, in the past we shall see cal mccarr bottom of the range uh, at support risk reward sets up favorably again it's just gonna take one person to collapse this thing or spike it back up here but again if you're looking for this card this is the uh, uh maybe the opportunity you have been looking for in kareel kaprizov um tons of volume on this one i mean people are buying this thing all the way down just kind of grinding lower um so it is lower but um there's there's a lot of things if you need to get in and out of it then you can certainly do that there's enough people willing to uh, to step in and take that off your hands all right a couple real world things here that may have an impact on our on our hobby and that's the u.s dollars one of them here top of the range we highlighted this one said all right look for it to come back you're kind of getting into an area of support here but we are seeing the uh, the momentum roll over for the most part and again if that dollar really starts to uh really starts to continue its collapse and that raises asset prices we're seeing that in the stock market since this thing is reversed stock market has started to uh to, 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 to go up and that is the back in the middle of last year more and more stocks have been making highs and now you're starting to see the indices follow that um in in cards perhaps you know that they could they could benefit from for benefit from that as well riskier assets like technology if you compare it to utilities we're starting to see a breakout in them as them as well so if, if technology outperforms um as we're starting to have, as what's been happening for you know the past um a couple of weeks or whatever and if this is able to sustain itself you know that's kind of a big deal the people that are more speculative in nature buying technology semiconductors all that kind of stuff you know the crypto names 
um, they may look to cards. Those are the card guys. We want them to come back and, and speculate as well. So um, S and P overall, we've got the uh, kind of a well-defined downtrend. You know, if you gave a monkey this chart and a pencil, you know, they would have come up with this this trend line you know, over the past year. And we're starting to break out of that as well. So that's a that's a good sign for the markets, and that's going to give people confidence and the uh, the courage to spend some more money in more riskier areas, um, perhaps. And so that could uh, that could benefit us as well. So again, you look at the things that have been beat up the most: the basketball. And that could be your biggest beneficiary here. You look at the bitcoins of the world here. I mean, it's up about what 30, 40, I think even upwards of 60% this year or something like that. I mean, it's been horrible the, the, over the last year, um, but um, it was coming up an important trend line test here. But if you look at uh, something like Ethereum, that's breaking out. You know of, of its uh, of its consolidation, so you have all these areas starting to show some relative all performance for the first time against the S and P. So, um, yeah, a lot of those riskier areas. I mean, that really could lead some credence to uh, the, the card market. Not going to back to where it was, but just giving people confidence to come back and and buy some of this other stuff here, or buy some of the things that they uh, that they've had in the past. And again, where did they play the most? They played basketball, I guess. So uh, there it is for it. That's what I got. Hope you uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, do all that kind of good stuff. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.